Hello, this is Naomi. This is a tutorial on palette knife painting. If you're new to my channel, I make videos to um, recording the process of getting ready for an art show that it, um, I'm doing next December. The theme is Urban Life, and it will be at the Phipps Center for the Arts in Hudson, Wisconsin. The opening date is December 4th. Well, today's topic is about palette knife painting. It is a big part of my pro um, my process. I do paint with a brush quite a bit, but I also really enjoy painting with a knife. And I've had a lot of questions um, on how do you do that. And so I thought today would be a fun time to show you. In addition to show you, I also, in the spirit of the times, have prepared um, a practice thing that you can do with the, all the stuff that you can find in your kitchen. So quarantine or not, chances are you probably have the tools and supplies in your kitchen that you can practice palette knife painting for the fun of it. So anyway, without further ado, here in front of me are some knives that I own. Many of these were given to me. Some of them I have bought, some I use, and some I don't use. The ones I'm showing you right now are my kind of specialty tools, tools that I only take out sometimes for a certain application. Um, and they're not my workhorses. These right here are my workhorses. I keep these right by my easel. Um, this one is my absolute favorite one. Can you see the shape? I'll show you a close up or something. And then this one is a new one that I just bought at La Paint. But I like it because it's big and it'll do more um, things. This is a big stiff one and this is a big flexible one. I don't know if you can see how bendy this is. Ooh, this one, not so much. Um, and this is a handmade one that I had made in Canada. Um, so you can basically um, pick your shape and flexibility and size and ask um, Oak Blade to make it for you. The handle right here is very thin. It's the part that I don't care for the most because um, for after a long time, my hands will cramp up. So I prefer the bigger ones because it lets your fingers curve a little bit more. But this is an excellent tool and, um, and I do like it. It's, so here are some basic techniques um, for palette knife painting that I have thought of. I think there's probably more, I just haven't thought of them. And sometimes I just do it naturally without thinking. And that's the way it should be. Don't feel like you have to like be wooden about it and academic about it. Palette knife painting should be something that just freely flows out of you. But I just wanna show you some techniques that I know just to like get you started. So here is their, I'm making up these names just so you know, they're spread, then multicolored spread. So for spread, that is just a simple swipe. You just take your knife, load it up on one edge, and off it goes. It has a straight edge one side and it swoops out that way. You can vary it how big or how small, and you can also vary whether you use the, the elbow part or the tip part, or all the way along. If you have a very small area, just load up, only load up the very top, let me see, where is it? Okay, only load up the top and you can get the, the top edge. You can load up towards the, the bottom of it and then you can use the bottom to, to get into a corner, like the back into it like that. So that would be spread. Multicolored spread would be doing that same thing, only you put two colors on your knife and don't mix them and you load them up like this. 
So I have blue and orange both. And then you just come out and you can also achieve that. Now, um, so that would be, sorry, that's multicolored spread right here. And this is just spread. Now line is something different entirely. That's where you use just the edge of your knife. Just this edge. And let's get a color here. You don't need it on this side. You just need it on that very edge. And you just do like this. This is the technique I used to sign my name. And, oh, I need more. With this technique, you basically have to load your knife every time. Uh, sometimes you have to. It's not easy, I'll tell you that. It takes patience to work with a knife. So yeah, this is how I sign my name because I have a lot of straight lines in my name. So that's the end. Anyway, you see how it goes. Now scratch is line, but in reverse. You need the under color to be distinctive from the over color. And you can you could um, stain this like a yellow underneath and then swoop it over with this color and then the yellow would show through. But okay, so scratch is when you cut into there. See? You can do anything. Um, it's usually a, a small line that you want. Not necessarily. And scoop is the same thing. But, well, it's a similar idea, but on a grander scale. So you put the paint on and then you scoop it off. Now maybe you can't see what went on right there because it's really, but here, let's, here we covered up the orange with blue. I don't know what's gonna happen this time. <laughs> That's kind of the fun part about knife painting too. You can experiment. See what that did? So look what happened here, where the canvas was blank the blue picked up, it stained the canvas, and here the orange stained the canvas, and then the blue modified it. So I use that often. The, this next thing is using that um, physical property of painting, of whatever touches the canvas first stains it. So for instance, if I'm putting some windows in a building or something like that, um, watch what you can do can take your dark windows and put them in using the line mechanism or line and flick. So these are my buildings. I'll, I'll, I'll put windows in the building first and then um, I'm not taking the time to um, mix color. So I, it's straight out of the tube a lot of this. Then I'll just come over it with whatever color is the actual building color and spread it over the top. Now this looks like a real mess and don't panic because now I'm going to scoop it all out and reveal what's underneath. So, see that? So that's the reveal technique. Thin the edge is something, um, when you get to the point in your art where you're worried about edges and how two shapes transition between each other, um, these next two ones are more for that phase of art and um, often you'll get um, art artists really uh, often worry about edges edge control and things like that so here's one segment and then now we'll get a contrasting color nearby now you see that's a very hard edge one of the problems with um, uh, knife painting often is that you can't control the edges. They're all hard. There's truth to that. So one way to do it is to thin the edge, which is to just kind of scoop out some of that. And you just kind of, well, 
Do the best you can. Now, I can't get at this. That's the other trick about knife painting is that if your easel pokes in, it blocks this from getting at it. So often what I'll do is set it right on the top here and on the top here and use the pressure to hold it off. And then I can reach it right here. So this is like a um, scooping mechanism, but it's right along the edge. And see how that kind of thinned out that edge right there? That is one way to get a softened edge. And another way is to muddle the edge. And let me show you what that is. Here's some leftover paint I had there before, a nice thick glob of it. It's a marigold color right here, right next to it. Now for this edge, and it's a really sharp edge, you wanna just muddle it, it would be like this. At least it's not quite so um, straight anymore. So those are some techniques that I use and they all get pushed together into one painting at some point or the other. The one I use the absolute most would be spread, but I use all of these sometimes to achieve the look I'm going for. So when I'm in the studio, my knives sit on this little magnet. And this is where I keep this um, knife. Extra brushes and knives I keep right up in there. So it's handy, but not quite as handy as these two. So, um, The questions I've gotten so far, thank you very much for the questions online. So far they have been things like, um, how do you get started? Um, I only have this in my house, but I, I have this, but I don't have that. Um, what could I substitute? Um, things like that. So um, I'm going to make a project and I'm gonna work flat, not at my easel, um, but flat here on a table um, so that it would be the equivalent of you putting together the things you can find in your own home. So, this is the COVID-19 palette knife project. So, um, if you can find any tools that you have that are supposed to be for, um, for art use. So, if you have oil paint or acrylic paint or gouache, those things work for a palette knife, those kinds of paints, because they're more um, thick. If you don't have those, you could make up a batch of frosting and color some colors. Um, that won't, of course, be archival, um, but use what you have, right? Um, then you will want a support. One of Somebody asked that they have all the art materials but not a support. If you're using oil paint, go in your recycle bin and get a cereal box. Um, the shiny side should repel the oil paint and it should be able to dry on there. It will, of course, not be archival, but this is just for fun, right? Um, if you're going to use gouache or acrylic, I think you'd also want to use the shiny side, but gouache, I think you'd rather use the um, cardboard side of, the, of this. So get a support, um, get, out, get out your paints, then get out a palette something that you can mix your paints on. Um, in the olden days when I was just starting to paint and I had little kids in the house, this was my palette. This is a cake pan with a lid. See how crusty this is? That's because I've used it for painting many years. Um, this was my favorite way of painting and back then I used to use acrylic. Um, well, I used both. But anyway, here's how I would do it. I would take some wax paper, cut a sheet that's a little bit big, and then so it wraps around, and then I would tape it down. You can use any kind of tape. Uh, right now I have duct tape, and duct tape is the strongest, because sometimes wax paper, the other kind of tape, doesn't stick very well. But duct tape does stick to wax paper. So then you just tape it on here. This is good for oil paint. Now, if you're going to use acrylic, there's something you should do in between that layer. 
let me just show you. You put one um, layer of paper towel down and you just spray it with some water. Once it's fully wet, see that? You just put your sheet back over it and tape it down. The water will wick ever so slowly through the wax paper and keep your paints fresh and they won't dry very quickly. This is a great one for if you're home and you probably have a cake pen, maybe hopefully you're not gonna use again because this isn't very friendly to cake pans. You see how this one turned out. Um, and the water, if you do water for any length of time, they, the metal ones will rust. But for coronavirus and getting you started, this will be just fine. So this is your palette. For your support, you're going to want to measure this to be something um, like an either an 8 by 10 or 11 by 14 or even a 16 by 20, but that's getting big. So the reason you want to do that is if you like it in the end and you want to frame it, those frames are really cheap. If you want to, if you do an odd size and you want to frame it, then you're going to have to look into like custom framing or something like that and that gets pricey. So there you have it. Here is our canvas. It's an eight by 10. That, that um, the cereal box we had was nine by 11. And though that isn't a standard size. So I cut it down to eight by 10, which I'll be able to easily find a frame for that. Okay, there's that. If you have a palette knife, like an official one, a good quality one, go ahead and, and get that out. If you don't have a palette knife, don't worry. Where is my thing? Ah. This is an old gift card that my daughter had um, and she gave it to me broken. So I'm just gonna use a broken gift card and that will work too. So To get started here, I am putting a little dab of paint on the four points of a canvas that are the most important, um, like the, the one third of the way over, one third of the way down, just to kind of place where the can it will go. And now I'm air drawing um, different shapes in the air so that I can kind of muscle memory them. And now I'm just kind of like putting little bits of, of paint like placeholders of where I want the shapes to go. Um, I'm kind of composing it in my head right now um, so that it kind of um, looks good. I, I arranged it so that there was some overlapping parts so that the mask is um, kind of, what's it called, um, reflecting onto the white of the toilet paper and the toilet paper is creating a shadow on itself and just to give some interest there. A lot of the painting happens before you even put paint on the, on the board. Um, you're actually composing it as you set up your still life. Or you could be painting something else. It doesn't have to be still life. Um, yeah, pick whatever um, inspires you. Um, I think this would be a really great memory of um, our time, our unusual time in um, quarantine. This hasn't really happened to us here in America before. So um, I think that having a painting um, of this time is kind of a special thing. So, so yeah, it, it'll mean different things to different people. So it doesn't have to be toilet paper and a mask, of course. I just, um, I was trying to look for simple shapes that I could do easily and quickly. I want it to be done in a short amount of time. So as you, this painting here, uh, I'm trying to finish it within 20 or 30 minutes. So I'm not 
getting it perfectly correct and some of the things um, probably could be done a whole lot better. Um, so what's happening right now, I'm looking at the big shapes. Don't get into the little details. Just look at big shapes right now in the beginning. There's always time for detail later. Um, you can always change anything you want later. Um, but right now you're trying to get the big picture. So you can see I have the basic shape of the toilet paper roll outlined and then the mask outlined, the two shapes of colors um, for the mask. And now I'm working on um, the darks. You don't want to get too far into your painting without putting in your darks. They should go in pretty close to the beginning for oil painters and acrylic painters. Of course, um, watercolorists would be the opposite. You would leave your darks to the end. But this is a palette knife video and, and you won't be, um, I don't think you can do watercolor with a palette knife. Hmm, might be wrong. Never tried that. So yeah, now I'm mixing different values of that um, purplish color just to have them on my plate. And as you can see, I'm holding my knife up against the actual object. And, and it's all about comparison. It's all about relativity. Um, trying, is this darker or lighter than this? Is it cooler or warmer than this? Um, so that's what I'm kind of doing right now. It's a little boring because um, it's mostly happening on the palette and not on the painting, but a lot is going on right now in the mixing part. As you can see, I have um, two of each of the primary colors to mix with and white, and um, I don't know if you noticed, oh, to make that dark, did you see how I made it? It was with um, the ultramarine blue, which is the cooler blue, more purple, and the Blizzarding crimson red, the darker red, but if you just do those, it's a brilliant purple, but it's a very dark purple. But to neutralize that out a little bit, with I add some yellow. If you add too much yellow, you'll actually make it a little bit lighter. So darks using a limited palette tend towards purple a little bit, unless they lighten a bit. There's other techniques you can use, um, but they require to make a black. Um, like if you have green mixed with that alizarin crimson will make a very deep black. If you have um, like burnt sienna or burnt umber mixed with ultramarine blue, that will make a really nice black also. It'll be a different kind of black than the green and red one. And that is also a different kind of black than this purplish one. So um, each of them, I mean, you could use all of them and make a really interesting um, painting with all black, different kinds of blacks. I've seen some of those and they're kind of interesting. So I, I had put the very dark, um, darkest dark up there and realized, no, that's in the, in the light. It has to be lighter. And then I put the darkest dark down in the bottom corner. I'm just trying to cover up some of that cereal box so it starts to look like a painting rather than the cereal box. It can be distracting. Sometimes you don't start with background. Sometimes you start with the, um, it doesn't matter which way you start, um, but that kind of was glaring at me and just wanted to cover it up a little. So as you see, the camera's getting in the way of getting a good angle on that, but um, just move your knife in whichever way is comfortable to um, get a good stroke. As you can see right now I'm just using the spreading technique. 
As I mentioned earlier, this is the um, technique I use most of the time with um, palette knife painting, just covering surface with paint. I'm making a nice warm white, so um, I add a little bit of that gold to the uh, Alien Cad yellow to the white. And that just um, warms it up because white by itself, if you just put straight white out of the tube, as you can see that by that pile there, it's um, pretty, it's actually kind of a little bit bluish, which means cool. And um, you want it to appear warm, like the, the, the light is hitting it, you know? And you want it to contrast with the other cool things in this painting. There is a lot of cool in this painting. All the shadows of the toilet paper are cool, and the mask is definitely cool. Um, so that that warmth of the white really um, really helps balance. Again, comparing. Now, um, if you need to neutralize something, that purple was looking too bright purplish, um, you add the complement of it. So yellow is, if you look on a color wheel, a yellow is opposite from, the, from purple. So that will bring it more towards the middle, more towards a grayish color. And... Um, Now, as I watch this later, I really, really wish I had made this a darker value. That means, yeah, a, a darker color of purple. I wasn't able to see it at the time, but now I can see very clearly. You know, hindsight is twenty twenty. I can go back and add another layer on top. Whether it's wet or dry doesn't matter. I, I can do that now, but I think I'm just going to leave it... Um, use it as a learning. Right now, I think I was wanting to go darker, and then my brain was saying, no, it's it's white, it's toilet paper, don't go darker. And, um, but I, sometimes, you, you know, what you, sometimes you need to let your gut do the, go ahead and, and not let your brain get in the way. But here, I let my brain stop me from getting darker. I, I started to get darker, and I'm like, no, that's going to be too much. Let it run for a little bit of that. Now I'm putting that reflected um, light in there. Do you see that beautiful blue cast on the toilet paper roll? I'm trying to get that right, and I didn't right away, but later on when I put in the mask, I'll do a better job. That's the thing about painting. It's not, um, it's never really finished. You can go back and modify as you see things. So you just put in what you see as you see it. And then the longer you work with it, the more things you'll notice and see. Painting is a lot about training your eyes how to look. And that's something you can do even without paint. You'll notice once you start painting, as you walk around in your life, go for walks or a drive or something, you'll start noticing things you never noticed before because your eye is starting to look for the details, look for the color, and look for how does this play against that. Um, and it's, it's quite... Um, fun. You, you start to paint in your brain without paint. <laughs> At least I do. I don't know if everyone does that, but 
something that happens for me. So I mixed up a color of blue, added a little yellow to it so that it um, warmed it up a bit. And just um, putting it in. That shape on the top, I left um, what uh, that cream color. Or maybe it, I made it a light bluish color, I think. You just need to get an approximation. Don't worry about um, the actual details. You can work in more details later. Here comes the little um, ribbings of the mask thing. I'm just starting with them. Here's where we get the, um, what's that called? The uh, Reflected light, more correct. Where it's more blue towards the mask and more purple away from the mask. Things within a still life should interact with one another. They should reflect and bounce off and cast shadows on each other. They should all be connected like a family. I'm sorry that I have this placed incorrectly. I didn't realize how much of it was getting cut off as I was filming. So as you can see, there can be a lot of indecision when it comes to painting. Um, I shouldn't say indecision, but there's a lot of decisions that you have to make as you move through a painting. It's always trying to like compare darker, lighter, warmer, cooler, those kinds of decisions. Sometimes you get it right and sometimes you don't, but don't be afraid if you don't. Scrape it out, try again, or go over the top. It's better to scrape out, but as of right now, the canvas is officially covered. That's the most fun part to cover the canvas. It's mostly just adjustment from here on out. So, um, yeah, you'll see pretty soon I I end up just finishing the adjustment part off canvas, uh, off camera, just to shorten the video a little bit. Um, but I wanted to get you at least this far to see how it um, how it how a painting starts, and it's kind of done when you're ready for it to be done. Paintings can end; you can finish them with a lot left to do on it, or, and I shouldn't say that, um, you can leave the viewer with more work to do inside their mind to finish the painting themselves, or you can polish it up and get it really exactly what you want the painting to say. Um, I, I don't know how to phrase that any differently than that, but, um, it's, it's kind of your choice as the artist of, of where you leave it. This one is going to be left um, pretty um, loose and, and um, expressive. You'll see the finished um, painting here in just a little bit. Okay, well, there we have it. Here's our COVID-19 quarantine painting, which is toilet paper and a face mask um, because those things are in short supply and I do have an extra of each of those in this house. So, um, 
Yeah, and I did it on a cereal box um, to kind of experiment to make sure that it'll work for you. And so far, I think it's working, but we'll see how it dries. I did use a palette knife. I thought I was going to use the credit card, and then when I... I'm just so used to using this knife, I, I just have to use that knife. <laughs> As I mentioned before, cleanup is super easy. And if you weren't able to finish in one sitting and your kids are going crazy and you have to come back, it's very easy. You just peel the tape off, put this on the inside of your cake pan and put the lid on. You can put it in the freezer if it has to stay a while. The trick about oil paint um, is if you can keep the oxygen off of it, or if you can keep it cold, it'll slow down the oxidation reaction. So either one of those will slow down the drying time and either one of those will speed up the drying time. If you can keep it in fresh air and if you can keep it warm, it will dry faster. So if we just do like this, fold it in and then put, snap the lid on, those paints will stay fresh like this in this pan outside of the freezer. They'll stay fresh for a couple of days. But if you put this pan in the freezer, it'll stay fresh for several months. Same with your painting. If you would like to work on it some more, just set this thing in the freezer like this and try not to you know, bump it, of course, because it'll stay wet in the freezer. I just want to answer a few questions um, and give a little information that I haven't been able to give yet. So for backgrounds, I had someone ask about backgrounds and the truth is that you can do them any which way you want. Um, I recommend if you're going to put a layer down and then a layer over the top, that that first layer you put down, you scrape it back off and leave the color within the grooves of the canvas and then put your next layer on the top. I wasn't able to show you that in this particular demo because we did it with um, cereal box and that's got a smooth shiny surface and that doesn't allow for the paint to stay behind. So if you scrape off the cereal box painting, you're back down to cereal box and you have nothing to work back from. But in a regular canvas you saw in the first demonstration where the paint stays behind in the little groovies. So use that to your advantage and do your background first and then lay your second coat on top. You can get very creative with your background color. You can actually go really wild colors if you want to and then um, put your second coat on the top and let some of that shine through as little sparkles. Or you can paint your background color um, the normal color and scrape it off, but leave that as the finished um, the finished texture. And so then you can get more texture differentiation um, with, you know, very, you know, scraped back texture with very thick texture right next to each other. That looks cool too. And that's the direction my painting is going right now with, um, but I have been using brush as the first coat and then laying on top of that with the knife so um and that is also i want to give you a tip that no one asked about but what i have been what i have found is if you don't like something if you're trying to troubleshoot why a painting isn't working try to scrape back the paint in that area and see if you like it usually that's what is the problem is just too much paint and you scrape back and it, and it either looks better already and if it still doesn't look better well then put another coat on because now you can um, you just don't want to build up build up build up so thick that you can't control the paint anymore um, knife painting is great for learning stuff you can become very bold and fearless because really just scrape back try again it's nothing lost and it lets you um, really explore your um, own personal artistry without fear of, of making a mistake. So what? You can't because you just scrape back and try again. Um, one thing I want to say is if you've noticed, there's no solvent used for oil painting because you just wipe the knife with a paper towel. That is so nice. So it makes it easy to travel with. 
It makes it easy to paint inside um, with children or other people that you don't want breathing in the toxic um, fumes. So solvent is, um, is always um, harmful. There's some that are, that are better for you like terpenoid and gamsol. Just in case you don't have art supplies in your house, you want to try this um, this technique. I have prepared something that you could do at home. Don't need to go out. Um, so stay tuned. So if you don't have any art supplies at all at home, here's you can still practice this. Um, take out some wax paper or some aluminum foil to to have a workspace to play on, and then if you don't have frosting. You could use ketchup or mustard or both. And a cake decorator knife is pretty much like a palette knife. Um, it has that springiness to it. If you don't have that, you could take a um, gift card, an old gift card, uh, break it into whatever size you want. And that also is springy. So that works too. So let's try some of our techniques with this, see if it works. I haven't tried it yet. Let's see. Here's a pile of ketchup. So the spreading technique is where you take, you dip into your pile, can you see? Can you see? Yeah. And you like spread. Well, that's really thin, it doesn't show up. Can you see that? Yeah? All right. So that would be the spread. And then the two-tone spread, you need two colors. So let's try mustard. Ah, oh, it's juicy. <laughs> Okay, let's just, oh, look at that. I don't know how old this mustard is. It's been in the fridge a very long time. Well, this is good. We get to clean out the fridge now. Oh my. It, it's best by June 18th of 2018. <laughs> All right, well, let's see if that works. Oh, I don't need a hat. Here's a hat. So you'd load up half of it with mustard and half of it with ketchup and do a two-tone spread. Yeah, it works. I wish the ketchup was a little bit more thick. The mustard's showing up really well, but the ketchup doesn't show up, but it does work. Can you, see, you can see the ketchup from where you are? Okay. Um, now, it, the next technique was to do a line. Oh, that works really good for the ketchup. Let's try it for the mustard. Oh, no, that was all juice. This is just a consistency thing. There we go. Um, then one of them was a scratching. So you put a spread out there nice and thick and then you scratch into it like that. And one of them was, oh, I can't remember my list, scooping up. So after you put it down, you can scoop it back up again. Um, what else? Oh, the reveal. I don't think the reveal is going to work with this. It only works with paint on canvas. Um, and, and then the edges. It's not going to show up on this. So this is more about playing with. You can just have your kids play around or you play around with, um, credit cards and condiments. Hee <laughs> hee, very fun.